this is not a day I think I, I can um, sum up, but I just wanted to mention four European cities uh, which I think perhaps pose some of the, the challenge for Atomium culture and, and for all of us. The first city is, is Athens. And in a way, almost everything we've talked about today perhaps has its origins in Athens and a spirit which we are all the descendants of, which was a spirit of, of observation, of actually seeing things as they are, a spirit of argument, often ferocious argument between scientists, philosophers, and so on, and a belief that that should happen publicly and that the very publicness of argument and observation and discovery is what helps them to happen. That was a very distinctive approach to knowledge, which in a way for two, two and a half thousand years, Europe has benefited from and has then in some ways helped to turn into a common property of the world. And yet in some ways, always we're trying to recapture that spirit because our institutions tend to go against every aspect of that. They tend to become perhaps not very theoretical, not very observational. Uh, they tend to become a little bit siloed. Conventional wisdoms take over from argument, and they become perhaps a little bit closed off from publicness and transparency. The second city to mention is Lisbon, which has already been mentioned a few times today. Uh, ten years after the ambitions of the Lisbon agenda, and with only a few weeks to go, it's clear it wasn't a successful program. It was needed, and probably what was done in its name was necessary, but it was not uh, enough. We've talked about tomatoes and pigs as one symptom of what Europe still appears to value most, uh, perhaps not uh, brains uh, and knowledge. And perhaps looking back, what one of the elements which Lisbon could have benefited from was something like an atomium culture. Atomium is described here as a platform. It's a platform, not a program. In a way, it's a platform which has to be filled in with content. But one of the ways which Europe has, I think, not caught up or kept up with the rest of the world is in the interlinking of universities, business, entrepreneurship, civil society. And this is a field where, in the past, Europe did lead the world, but has uh, fallen behind has arguably allowed its institutions to become too hierarchical, too stagnant, not enough space perhaps for uh, younger minds and voices. And that's one of the ways in which I think the Lisbon agenda uh, was very good on rhetoric, very good on talk, but perhaps not so good in terms of action. The third city to mention, uh, as you did, is Copenhagen, only a week or two away. Uh, whatever ever else is wrong with Europe, I think on climate change there's at least been more seriousness of purpose about the issue and about what could be done than any other region in the world. But the very issue of climate change I think brings to the fore all of the challenges which Atomium culture is part of resolving. One is this is a field where if you are a scientist working in any aspect of climate change, you've had to become a communicator. You've had to try and explain very complex phenomena to a public audience who are hungry to understand what are rather difficult and ambiguous things to understand. I remember a politician about 10 years ago saying to me that the problem with scientists was that they, were, uh, they reminded him of the comment which the poet Shelley made of his mother. And Shelley said of his mother that she had lost the power of communication, but sadly not the power of speech. And uh, there were some times when uh, experts do speak but not communicate. And yet, 10 years on, as I say, the climate change field has, in many ways, done extraordinarily well in communicating. But every scientist now needs to learn not just the 30-second piece for YouTube, but how to explain complex systemic phenomena in ways the public can understand. This is something which uh, Atomium can help with. But I want to make two other points about Copenhagen, whether or not is, it is successful. One is that much of the focus of attention in equivalent summits in the last five or 10 years has been on technological innovation and scientific understanding. That is undoubtedly correct. 
But the more we learn about climate change, the more it's clear that we also need other kinds of skill, other kinds of method, because so much of what needs to be done is really about social organization, about psychology, about our patterns and lifestyles, which can't be fixed through technology. And I think one of our challenges across Europe in the next five or ten years is doing, keeping the momentum on technological innovation, the key issue of the late 20th century, but also matching it with much more effective social innovation, innovation around human psychology, behavior, which are key not just to climate change, but also to issues like healthcare and, uh, and, and aging as well. And the final point on climate change in Copenhagen is every young researcher working in that field in Europe wants to connect better with others across Europe, but they also want to connect globally. And indeed, I think it's very important that we think of making Europe linked better as important, but only insofar as it also enables our young scientists and researchers to be active members of a global community. That is what they aspire to. It's the way knowledge and teams are organized. And it's very important Europe doesn't try and put boundaries around itself, which are inappropriate ones. And that really leads me to the, the fourth city I wanted to mention, which is, is Berlin. 20 years after the fall of the wall, that in a way is the great metaphor for Europe's uh, hope and, and future. Uh, and in some ways, what we've been talking about today, though, is the challenge of breaking down some of the less visible walls which do exist within our institutions and the way we do business. We heard earlier about the ivory tower, the need to build bridges out of the ivory tower. Many of our institutions are quite siloed, better at communicating internally than externally, and yet we know that our future depends on breaking down the silos, creating cross-cutting ways of thinking, ways of seeing, and ways of acting. The other respect in which I think the Berlin Wall is perhaps a useful metaphor for us is in a way its fall was a victory of good science over bad science. <laughs> its fall was a victory for one part of the Enlightenment tradition of investigation and hypothesis and free inquiry and argument over another strand the Enlightenment took which tried to suppress all of those things. And one of the, the battles which Atomium, I think, is part of is how to embed much more deeply in our society, in the media, and in the internet, is the strength of good science over bad science. And I think a large part of that will be mobilizing younger researchers to be confident voices when they see misleading facts, misleading truths on the television screen, in the newspapers, or even from in political debate. We have a public who I think are hungry for enlightenment and truth and reliable authority, but simply aren't getting uh, enough of that from any of the existing sources. And um, I, I think there is a generation so waiting to be helped, empowered to become the guardians of, essentially, of truth and discovery against falsehood. And one of the ironies of the internet is it is both a wonderful circulator of truths, but also a wonderful circulator of untruths uh, as well. So these are four cities, um, Athens, Lisbon, Copenhagen, Berlin, all of which in a way have been in our minds today. Uh, Atomium has set itself a very uh, ambitious set of goals, uh, and we heard them made even more ambitious this morning by Valéry Giscard d'Estaing, as he encouraged our, our audace uh, in the face of these challenges. I think that the, the, the real issue for Atomium will be how to find the key points of leverage where an organization with relatively limited resources, albeit a wonderfully strong network of partners, how it can uh, find the points of leverage to have most influence.